In the world of space exploration, promises and reality often exist in different orbits. Blue Origin's CEO Dave Limp has been making headlines with a flurry of announcements about New Glenn's progress at Launch Complex 36. But amid the steady stream of updates, a curious pattern has emerged. The massive rocket, despite being transported to the pad a month ago for its crucial hot fire test, remains silent on the launch pad. The story becomes even more intriguing with Blue Origin's latest strategic shift. Rather than proceeding with the anticipated hot fire test, the company has announced a change in plans. Opting first for a wet dress rehearsal, a gentler but time-consuming approach that raises questions about New Glenn's readiness for its debut flight. Tonight, we're peeling back the layers of these developments, examining what's really happening at LC-36, and analyzing how these decisions could reshape Blue Origin's ambitious timeline. We'll also take a closer look at SpaceX's latest Dragon mission success, highlighting the growing gap between promise and performance in the commercial space race. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours. Let's dive right in. The atmosphere at Launch Complex 36 tells a compelling story. Where there should be the thunderous roar of B-4 engines during hot fire testing, there's an unexpected silence. New Glenn, Blue Origin's massive orbital rocket, stands against the Florida sky, an impressive but motionless monument to the challenges of modern spaceflight development. On December 8th, Dave Limp addressed the space community with what seemed like a straightforward explanation. Regulatory approvals were pending, a reasonable delay perhaps, except this was just the latest in a series of shifting narratives. Just two days earlier, Blue Origin had announced a significant change in strategy. Instead of proceeding with the anticipated hot fire test, they would first conduct a wet dress rehearsal, a decision that speaks volumes about the current state of New Glenn's development. To understand the significance of this pivot, let's break down what these tests actually mean for a rocket's development. A hot fire test is the ultimate proving ground. It's where the integrated rocket system faces the full fury of its engines while remaining secured to the pad. Every component, every connection, every system must perform flawlessly under maximum stress. It's a brutal but necessary trial by fire. A wet dress rehearsal, by comparison, is like a dress rehearsal for a play where the actors never actually perform their lines. The rocket is fueled, systems are checked, but the engines remain silent. While this test is crucial, Choosing to perform it before a hot fire test represents a more cautious approach than initially planned. But there's more to this story than just test sequences. Blue Origin's teams have been repeatedly seen performing vertical stacking and unstacking operations with New Glenn at the pad, a dance that suggests ongoing engineering challenges. Each stack and unstack cycle represents hours of careful work and potential risk to the vehicle. It's not the kind of operation you perform unless absolutely necessary. Meanwhile, Blue Origin's marketing machine hasn't missed a beat. December has seen announcements about payload testing for GS-1 and GS-2 missions, updates about their drone ship preparations, and various other developments that, while important, don't address the central question. When will New Glenn actually fire its engines? If we follow the current timeline, assuming it holds, the wet dress rehearsal is scheduled for the third week of December. This leaves precious little time for the crucial hot fire test before year's end. But here's where things get even more complicated. The FAA approval process, as Limp acknowledged, isn't a simple rubber stamp operation. It involves detailed safety analyses, environmental assessments, and coordination with multiple agencies. The implications of these delays ripple far beyond Blue Origin's immediate plans. NASA's Escapade Mars mission, which operates under strict launch windows, now faces potential scheduling challenges. The U.S. Space Force's National Security Space Launch Program, Kuiper satellite deployments, and even preparations for Artemis V, all these projects had been counting on New Glenn's availability. While Blue Origin grapples with these challenges, SpaceX continues to push the boundaries of what's possible. Their recent activities at Starbase tell a very different story. On December 15, a successful static fire test of six Raptor engines on the S-33 hardware marked another milestone toward Flight 7. The following day, they completed an additional single-engine test, 
demonstrating the kind of rapid, iterative progress that has become SpaceX's hallmark. This contrast becomes even starker when we consider SpaceX's ambitious plans for Starship's next flight. They're not just aiming for another launch. They're planning to attempt a controlled ocean landing of Starship while simultaneously testing the Mechazilla catch mechanism for the Super Heavy Booster. It's the kind of bold, multi-objective mission that pushes the entire industry forward. Looking ahead to 2025, SpaceX's roadmap becomes even more ambitious. They're in discussions with the FAA about dramatically increasing their launch cadence to as many as 25 Starship flights. The FAA has already scheduled public meetings for January, two in person and one virtual, to address the environmental impacts of this increased activity. It's a clear signal that while some companies are still working toward their first orbital flight, others are already planning for regular operational services. The contrast extends to current operations as well. While Blue Origin works through its development challenges, SpaceX continues to deliver reliable services to NASA through its Dragon program. The recent success of CRS-31 demonstrates this perfectly. The mission, which splashed down off Florida's coast on December 17th, didn't just deliver cargo, it brought back thousands of pounds of critical research materials from the ISS. This unique return capability sets Dragon apart from other cargo vehicles like Northrop Grumman's Cygnus or Russia's Progress spacecraft, which burn up during re-entry. The reliability of SpaceX's services has become increasingly crucial, especially given the ongoing delays with Boeing's Starliner program. In fact, NASA has had to reassign astronauts originally slated for Starliner flights to upcoming Dragon missions, ensuring continuous access to the International Space Station. This includes the crew for the upcoming Crew-9 mission, scheduled for February, which will maintain the vital rotation of personnel on the ISS. These parallel narratives, one of careful, perhaps overly cautious development, and another of rapid, iterative progress, highlight a fundamental difference in approach to modern spaceflight development. While both companies aim for the stars, their paths couldn't be more different. The ongoing silence at LC-36 stands in stark contrast to the frequent rumble of rockets at SpaceX facilities. As we look toward 2024, the space industry finds itself at a fascinating crossroads. Will Blue Origin's methodical approach ultimately prove more prudent? Or will SpaceX's rapid iteration continue to set the pace for the industry? The answers to these questions will shape not just the future of these companies, but the entire trajectory of human spaceflight. As we've seen, the race to revolutionize space travel isn't just about who can build the biggest rocket, it's about who can execute their vision most effectively. While Blue Origin's careful approach with New Glenn reflects their commitment to safety, SpaceX's rapid development cycle continues to reshape our expectations of what's possible in space exploration. The coming months will be crucial for both companies. Will Blue Origin complete their testing sequence and finally join the Orbital Club? Will SpaceX achieve their ambitious goal of catching both stages of Starship? The space industry stands at a pivotal moment, and these developments will shape the future of human spaceflight for years to come. These contrasting approaches remind us that innovation in space exploration isn't a one-size-fits-all journey. Each company's path reflects their unique vision, resources, and risk tolerance. But ultimately, it's results that matter. And 2024 promises to be a defining year for both organizations. If you're as fascinated by these developments as we are, make sure to subscribe to Elon Musk 24 hours for the latest updates on SpaceX, Blue Origin, and the entire commercial space industry. Hit that like button if you found this analysis helpful and share your thoughts about New Glenn's timeline in the comments below. Will it fly before Starship Flight 7? Join the discussion and become part of our growing community of space enthusiasts. Until next time, keep watching as history unfolds above us. Breaking news from Starbase. SpaceX has just completed the final preparations for what could be their most ambitious Starship test flight yet. The mighty spacecraft stands ready, silhouetted against the Texas sky, as engineers put the finishing touches on a mission 
that could revolutionize space travel as we know it. But that's not all that's making waves in the space industry today. While SpaceX pushes the boundaries of orbital flight, Blue Origin has revealed their latest crew for an upcoming New Shepard mission. And halfway across the world, China is unveiling plans that could reshape the future of lunar exploration. In an unprecedented display of operational prowess, SpaceX is about to attempt something remarkable. Four launches in just 48 hours. One Starship and three Falcon 9 missions will take off from launch sites spanning from Texas to Florida to California, showcasing the company's incredible capacity to push the boundaries of what's possible. The upcoming Starship test flight is packed with groundbreaking objectives. SpaceX will attempt to catch the massive Super Heavy booster with the launch tower's arms, a feat that could transform rocket reusability forever. Meanwhile, Starship itself will aim for a controlled vertical landing, test a modified heat shield, and perform crucial engine relights in space. The mission's preparation has been meticulous. From the innovative detonation suppression system test to the successful integration checks, every detail has been carefully refined. The stage is set for what could be a historic moment in aerospace history. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours, where we bring you the latest developments in space exploration and innovation. Let's dive right in. The early morning silence at Starbase was broken by the distinctive sound of venting gases, the first signal that something big was about to happen. At 10.40 a.m., CDT, SpaceX engineers initiated what would become one of their most crucial integration tests yet. As liquid oxygen and methane began flowing into the massive tanks, a beautiful layer of frost started forming on the spacecraft's exterior nature's way of confirming that the loading process was proceeding as planned. This wasn't just any ordinary test. The Super Heavy Booster's tanks were strategically filled to one-third capacity, while Starship's tanks were loaded with precise measurements, 50% liquid oxygen and 33% methane. Each percentage point was carefully calculated to achieve the perfect balance needed for the upcoming flight test. The successful completion of these propellant loading operations marked a significant milestone in SpaceX's preparation sequence. Elon Musk's announcement that Tuesday's flight shows promising prospects sent ripples of excitement through the space community. But what makes Flight 6 so special? Let's break down the unprecedented challenges and innovations this mission brings to the table. First, there's the ambitious attempt to catch the Super Heavy Booster using the launch tower's mechanical arms, dubbed the Chopsticks. Picture this a 230-foot-tall rocket booster descending from the edge of space needs to precisely position itself between two giant mechanical arms. It's like trying to thread a needle while skydiving, except the needle is the size of a skyscraper. This maneuver isn't just for show. It represents a fundamental shift in how we think about rocket recovery and reuse. Meanwhile, Starship itself will attempt something equally challenging, a controlled vertical landing. The spacecraft will need to survive the intense heat of atmospheric re-entry, maintain stability through varying air densities, and touch down with the precision of a ballet dancer. The modified heat shield being tested during this flight features enhanced thermal protection systems designed to withstand temperatures that could melt steel. But perhaps the most technically demanding aspect of Flight 6 is the planned in-space engine relight. This capability is crucial for future missions to the Moon and Mars, where spacecraft will need to restart their engines multiple times during long-duration flights. The engineering team has implemented sophisticated propellant management systems to ensure the engines can reliably reignite in the zero-gravity environment of space. 